Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to MC Eternal. So, since the last episode, I have done a bit of work. Uh, you may have noticed behind me here, we now have chicken, nature, dye, leather, uh, skeleton, zombie, and redstone essences. Um, and I went with redstone because we're going to be doing something with that. Um, maybe this episode, perhaps. Um, I also did a bit of work, as promised. I did a bit of work throughout here, uh, building out some of these areas. Uh, right here, these are just inverted lights from Ender.io. They're really, really cheap. Um, so I went ahead and spread those out, kind of as our lighting. And kind of with, we have kind of this like clean look on the walls. Not normally a base style that I tend to go with, but I figured this pack, um, it's more of a short-term pack anyways. Just kind of going through the challenges and stuff like that. Um, and the quests and all that, but um, but I thought this base style would work out pretty nice for us. And then here we have our hatch, um, which used to seal up. I don't know why it's not wanting to seal up, but um, I did finish running the ladders down and kind of clean that up a bit. And then back in here, no, whoops, uh, right over here I made a, a Melissa's Doors door factory, um, and I went ahead and made some custom doors through here, and this is actually just a custom door that's set to vanish and it kind of leads back here to our uh, creosote setup. So if we need to access that, it's back there, but I mean, it's not really hidden. It kind of stands out, but that's okay. I don't know if this pack has any of the like really hidden doors, like where they're actually hidden, um, but this is fine. It kind of shows up and we know there's a door there and it leads back in there. Now, if I get close to these doors, they open up. These are just custom doors with Melissa's doors set to... Um, if we take a look in here, I've got... Well, this was the door over there, but... Um, what these are, they rotate. And uh, their opening time, I think I set it down to like... I think I set it up to seven. No, maybe I said... I don't remember. But then I have an auto-close delay... Um, it's actually lower, like, it auto-closes as soon as you get away from it, whereas the vanishing door I set up to 30 seconds, or 30 ticks, because I wanted it to stay open a little bit longer. Um, because these will only close once you get away from them. So I can stand here, and they're going to stay open for us. And then the sound is pneumatic door, and, uh, I put player detection on right there, and double door on as well. Um, but then you can just put your materials in here and say create, and then if you want to change anything, you can change it and then hit modify and modify, put your door in here and then modify. So I've covered these a fair number of times in the past. They're really, really simple to use, fun to play around with. Um, then let's see in here. This is kicking away. By the way, I did upgrade this because our item conduit was not quick enough. Um, so I just, I was going to make a... Some speed upgrades for Ender IO, but they were too expensive right now. Just because we don't have um, we don't really have a proper alloy smelter, and to make the if I can find the things for some reason I'm being blind. Are they down here? Yeah, they're right here. They are the extract speed upgrades. Um, it takes electrical steel, and I can't make this in the alloy smelter. Um, I'd have to get like a melter or, well, no, not a melter, but um, I'd have to basically get alloy furnace, ingot form, or, you know, something to that effect. So I was like, well, okay, then we'll just switch over to an item duct with a signalum servo because signalum we can make in the um, alloy smelter. I was going to make the enderium servo, but enderium we need uh, platinum, right? Right here, platinum. And um, also ender pearls. We don't have very much in the way of ender pearls at the moment. And so I was just like, okay, well, signal is perfectly fine. It's keeping up now fairly well and um, kind of kicking those seeds out. It's still filled up with sludge, but I found that it actually really doesn't matter. It still harvests everything pretty well. I mean, it could be faster. You can see this is. Uh... Oh, it's scanning these sides right now. It'll start, uh, I think it's starting to collect right now. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it could be faster if we pumped out the sludge, but right now I'm actually not worried about it because 
with this pack not having recipe tweaks at all, it's, this is way more than we're ever going to need probably coming in. Um, over here, this is now a tier 6 Inferium Seed. Um, which, these are just, they're, they're standard recipe, so just need Insanium Essence to make them. Um, which isn't too bad for us at this point. It's been building up, and this has been pumping out seeds. There's no seeds in here at the moment, but I do have some planted. And this pathway here leads down into an area that we'll use before too long. Uh, and this is actually going to be where some of our AE2 stuff is set up. So we'll be starting into AE2 before too long, um, because that's going to help us finish out a lot of the quests for the pack. Um, and then I have sorting up here. Um, which I did kill some chickens, got some chicken chunks, made the chicken essence. So, and then over here, I've done some sorting. These are actually kitchen cabinets that are dyed with a cyan dye um, to make this. And inside, like this one has a lot of our agricraft stuff. And I've got some more inferium seeds. I could plant these. Uh, but I'm actually working on changing everything over to the tier 6. It's going to take a little bit. And then these are our 10, 10, 10 seeds. Um, so I've got extras in case anything were to ever happen to this. Um, there shouldn't be anything that happens, but just in case. And then our mechanical user that we set up. And then I went ahead and put a mechanical user here with our creative watering can. Use item, right click, upper left slot only. And so it waters that. It's not a whole lot of speed increase, but it is a little bit. So, um, And I believe... Yeah, I couldn't remember if we put those down there, but we did. Good. Um, and this thing just pretty much passively makes tier 6 seeds. I mean, you could make it faster, but um, honestly, at this point, I've got a lot of essence coming in as he is. And then I did a bit of sorting with stuff. Um, that's kind of all, like, tools and spells and used items, things like that. This is all just kind of blocks over in this section. Um, and then this is... Well, that's our mystical agriculture stuff. I did make a seed reprocessor because I got a bit of prosperity farmed up. Um, but then down in here is kind of like tech-related stuff uh, through there. And then there's our our market man. Um, up here, I think I had this moved last episode. I can't remember, but I did move this over here just so we can kind of access our system. And I did a bit of sorting. So actually, this chest is empty. And so I got stuff kind of started cleaning up a little bit. And then if we come out, uh, oh, and our nether portal is moved over to there. So kind of come around and enter that. And there's our nether portal. Right inside of here, these doors open automatically as well. Because I found that they've added the ability in Melissa's doors, they've added the ability to use the custom door factory to alter default doors instead of just the customized doors. However, unfortunately, it does not work with these doors. So, I want my player sensor back. <laughs> or I want that fixed, one or the other. Um, but yeah, so that just leads over to there. Nothing was really changed over there. I did do a bit of mining, but that was about it. Um, and then down here, these are tier 6 seeds. So you can see how much it's generated passively. Um, from that system. So it won't take too long before it fills up. What I could do to make it even easier is maybe shut off this harvester, let these grow, come out and harvest them by hand, um, or set, you know, a industrial foregoing harvester over here or something like that. But um, this is generating stuff at a pretty decent speed. We have uh, almost two, sa two stacks of Supremium, which I did burn through a lot of this to make the Insanium that we needed. But it's generating fast enough. It's not a big deal. And then once these seeds start filling out more, we're going to have more essence than we know what to do with coming in. And then lastly, if we pop over to our mine colonies area. Um, first up, down here, this is the Fisher. And it's now upgraded to a level 3 at the moment. This is what the level 3 looks like. Um... But once this builds out, I'll be able to kind of build a bridge that goes across. I'm not going to pass up mobs to kill. Just because 
we're going to steadily work on, we'll have to farm on it a little bit, but we're going to steadily work on that quest to kill a lot of mobs. So, but this is our fisherman at the moment, level three, and yeah, she's out here fishing. So basically I just gave her a fishing rod and some baked potatoes. That's something else I need to bring up. I noticed that the villagers won't eat, they don't want to eat a lot of my food. Um, I tried giving them even bread. They didn't want bread. Um, I tried giving them um, apples. They didn't like apples. I tried giving them some Pam's food. They didn't seem to like that. Baked potatoes. They love baked potatoes. So I put a little potato um, crop down through here and have been feeding them baked potatoes because that's something that they seem to like. Um, this is our residential area, which I think is the same as it was. Did we upgrade it to level two during the last episode? Or did I start it? But this is what the level two looks like. Which basically my fisher and my builder live here. Because that's the only people that we have working at the moment. And um, did a little bit of landscaping. Just kind of flatten this out because both these buildings were kind of sitting down. And um, that was because the way that the... There was that stretch of land that kind of came out like this. So kind of clean that up a little bit. And then over here, this is actually a new style. Um, it was brought up in the comments for the Mine Colony episode that if you use your scroll wheel to move, which I, I tend to do, it will skip some things. So there was actually a Nordic builder. There's a Nordic for all of them. So I'm going to leave that building as is because we're going to have multiple houses, of course, so it only makes sense that there's different styles of houses throughout the town. The builder, even though we probably will make a second or even third builder, um, I decided I wanted this one to be Nordic because it kind of, I think it'll look better with the big Nordic uh, town hall in the distance once it actually looks Nordic right now. It just looks like it's still just a tier one. Uh, so what I did was I had the builder change this over to a Nordic style. Um, and then up, I've got it upgraded right now. It's a tier three. So your builder has to be the same level of anything that you're trying to upgrade. Cause I was going to upgrade the fisher to a tier three. And then it was like, you need a builder tier three. So I was like, okay, let me do that. But so far, I mean, they haven't been very expensive. Uh, the most expensive thing, I guess, is getting some dyes, which I've got dye essence now. Um, so that's not really a big issue. So, but yeah, and that's, that's what the Nordic one looks like and there's actually a little upstairs area like if we pop up here like that and then there's this like tower part you can't actually get into the tower part but it's up there um, and then there's this back door so we'll have to make a pathway that leads to that so that's where we've got our buildings upgraded to and changed over to try not to build any of the new buildings or anything without you guys but I did upgrade a few um, and we are going to, before we get started on our project today, which is in this little area, working on our Jaffa cakes. Um, first up, actually, I think I completed a couple quests. Yeah, I made the door factory, which that gives us 50 gold. And then I also, this we completed, like, last episode, I never turned it in, so we get a vampirism guide. We turned in, no, i tell you what it was. It was because I updated the pack. That's why, and now they added a vampirism guide for us. And so that's like a new reward. And then also, I finally mined some charge sardis. So we get 75 gold. That's all I've really done uh, between episodes. And with the update, they added blocks that we can sell. So we can sell like 32 blocks of redstone, gives us 1,200 gold. That's the reason for redstone essence. Or that's part of the reason. Also because you tend to use a lot of redstone and it makes it easier to have that essence. Diamonds and gold would be great, but I was actually going to try to make diamond seeds, but I found that gold seeds, there's no recipe. We have to buy these in the shop, and the same is true for diamond seeds. We have to buy these in the shop. And if we take a look at the shop, if we pull up seeds, there's, uh, well this one requires mystical agriculture. And I'm not sure if gold requires farming and agriculture. Um, I'm not sure what quest in particular, but it's probably one of these is the mystical agriculture um, to unlock the diamond seeds. I don't know for sure. We could blast through these and we might. 
Um, but the very first thing that I want to do is if we pull up, before we get started on our Jaffa system, I want to pull this up and, um, oh, and actually one thing I want to do, one thing that's kind of a grindy quest that I want to go ahead and start on that relates to these guys is we have to kill 50 villagers. <laughs> we have to kill 50 of them. And so I've got these two here that are pretty much, uh, they've pretty much, they've been starving and just sitting here and not doing anything. So I'm going to murder these. There we go. Quest complete down a dark path. There's been a death in the colony. The colony will mourn Al, uh, Elaine F. Asgard tomorrow out of respect. And I killed him. And then we're going to kill her too. Okay. So... That gives us 50 gold, and then we have to do genocide, which is kill 50 innocent citizens. So, but that way they've got some time to kind of build back up. And we got their name tags. Um, I guess I should keep them. This will be like, we'll keep them as like a memorial sort of thing to all the, the 50 innocent civilians we had to kill for the quest. But anyways, if we take a look here, um, I would like to make some new buildings. And I'm thinking the very first thing that we should probably do is maybe make a delivery man. Maybe. Or do we want to make a mine? Let's make a mine first, actually. And on the last Mine Colonies episode, um, Herakane suggested that maybe we do our Mine Colony stuff in the middle, like, just kind of like at the start of maybe another episode set up. Oh, that makes two mines. That's awesome. Okay, we'll take that. Um, but maybe we start off with doing a little bit of mine colony stuff because it's something that takes, you know, it takes a while. Mine colonies isn't something that you just bust through. I mean, I guess technically you could, but it's not really any fun to do it that way. Kind of the gradual growth of this town would be kind of neat. And um, so we're going to set up our mine this episode and give him time between episodes to build it. Or between a couple episodes, depending. Um, and this is what the Nordic... Let me move it over here so we can get a better look at it before I set it. I'm thinking down there, though, is where I'm going to want it. But um, that's just the level one. Let's set it to the level five. <laughs> what in the world? This is the Nordic level five mine. That thing is intimidating. It really, really is. Um, there's also, like, they said uh, in the comments to do this instead of scroll wheeling, because it jumps really, really bad whenever you scroll wheel. Um, the acacia mine is like that. The birch is, of course, a flat block. That's, like, the ugliest. Ugh. <laughs> I guess if you wanted it to be cheap, there's a cheap one to do. There's the Dark Oak, which I absolutely love that. Dwarven. And it was brought up in the comments, these are designed to be underground, which totally makes sense. Um, I mean, I still think they're kind of blue looking, but maybe you could do like tops or decorate them out yourself um, to make them look a bit nicer. There's also Jungle. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that's the way the jungle one looks. That's kind of nifty, actually. And then there's Medieval Birch. I'm going to have to go sleep real quick. Medieval Birch is like this. Which, that looks so much better than the other Birch building. Like, the other Birch building is... I don't know. It's like, when you first start Minecraft and you're like, I don't know how to build things yet. You do that and make this, like, box, you know? And that's, uh, that's what it makes me think of. Oh, wow. That birch one is really cool. But we'll probably do a couple of these, a couple different ones of these as time goes on. And then, um, Medieval Dark Oak. It's pretty much the same style. It's just Dark Oak. And then there's Medieval Oak, which is pretty much the same style. Medieval Spruce. 
the Nordic, which you already looked at, there's the Sandstone, which of course is very sandy. Uh, Space Wars. Which this was brought up in the comment that this is meant to be like Tatooine. Um, sort of designs. I don't guess I see it, but sure. <laughs> I don't know. Space Wars, it still doesn't make any sense to me. Then there's the Mesa, which is like that. There's the stone, which this one is like the one that we had before. Because, you know, we only have like stone, wood, and I think maybe one other type that we could pick from. So that's the stone. And then there's the wooden, which is pretty much the same thing except in wood. So, of course, we're going to go with the Nordic. So this one, and I'm thinking it's going to sit down there. So we're going to go ahead and move it to about the right spot. And we need to find kind of where the entrance I'm thinking is this one. And so maybe if we set it down like that. Yeah, I'm thinking something like that. And I think the big question is, what's it going to look like? As far as the entrance, that's perfect. So the entrance would go in right there. And then we would have to like flatten out some of this terrain. Um, because, you know, it's sitting on a hill. But we're building in the mountains, so that's to be expected. So, let's go ahead and accept that. I think it's going to look pretty good once it's done. So we'll go ahead and say, okay, build that. And then we'll give our builder a bit of time. He's going to have to go like clear out a bit of land. I did give him some iron tools. Um, because as a level 3 he can use iron tools. So maybe it won't take him too long. Um, let me go ahead and make sure that... That little area there is chunk loaded for him. I'm not sure. I know in the past they couldn't chunk load their own areas. I don't think they can now, but I could be wrong. So... But okay, we'll get him building that, and then we're going to start work on our Jaffa factory. That's our latex processing unit. Still got latex in it, so I haven't moved it. Um, but these, of course, have filled up. Uh, that hasn't filled up because it's not doing anything at the moment. But um, these have, of course, filled up since the last episode. And let's go ahead. I did make... Um, in here I've got three crafters and I put my time in a bottle in here because it's got so much time in it I'm, I barely ever use the thing anyways um, I don't find it to be all that useful and um, so I've just stuck it in here I haven't really been using it and then I made up some item conduits and what we're going to do is I think I slotted everything that we would need if we go essence root which would be the chicken the dye the nature Pretty much for this. Um, I slotted it on that side. So we're going to easily be able to pump it out with conduits. Um, over to this room. And let's go ahead and pull up our Jaffa cakes. So. For this. Apparently we can get them from loot crates. Uh, for this we're going to need sugar. And what we're going to do. Is let's go ahead. I've got some of those conduits. Yeah, I've got three. I may have to make some more of these, but I've got I've got the stuff made up for them, so that's not an issue. Um, what we're going to do first and foremost, actually, is go ahead. I'm going to run over a conduit line from here over to that room. And I'll probably just run it up along this, this way. And then once we can make facades, of course, we'll facade it. I could probably make the stuff, the machine that we need to make facades, but um, we'll do that once we get more into Ender I.O. I do believe. Let's go ahead and say that you can extract always active. It's going to be on the green channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this conduit line over, and we're going to go ahead and plug in here, 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 here. And we're going to say that you can extract always active on the green channel. You can extract, you can extract, and you can extract. And then we're just going to bring this down like that. And then what we're going to do 
because I can't put it on the back. This isn't something I could facade. It's all little tiles, so um, back in there. But if we have some visible conduits, that really doesn't bother me at all, uh, truth be told. And then for the, let's say for the energy, what we're going to do is we're going to run this out. I'm going to go make some more of these, but I'm going to run it out to here, I think. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to set up our crafters, and these are going to set, we're going to start with those two right there. Remember, this will be the floor, so it'll be like that. Um, and then let's go ahead, run some energy out, run some power out, or um, some items and some energy and the items, we're going to say that you can insert on green, you can extract on red. And then over here, you can insert, or you can extract on red also. Insert on green. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and I'm not going to plug up these item conduits just yet, because these are already extracting. But what we're going to do is we're going to run... Our item line is going to go like that. Our energy line, we're going to go ahead and run that one over like that. So these should have energy now, which they do. They're filling up. And then we can set up our recipes for these. And the harvester, I'm actually probably going to shift that this episode, but we'll get, we'll get to that here in just a little bit. And what we're going to do, first and foremost, we're going to say that you, this crafter right here can take sugarcane. Okay, and I'm going to set this to on to activate for right now. And we're going to go ahead and add some sugarcane in right there. And then we can just do sugarcane make sugar. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and apply that. And we're going to say the result goes to the, um, I don't know, should we make it stay... I don't know. I'm going to apply it for now. I might change it here in a second. Once we see, and let me cut down the amount of sugar cane. We only need like that, I think. Um, so that pretty much takes care of that. Now the the egg, we decided we were going to do tofu eggs, even though since we have chicken essence, we could easily do it as standard eggs, but um, I don't know. Let's see. Do we want to, do we want to just do it as standard eggs? Yeah, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, we'll just do it as standard eggs. It doesn't really matter to us. So let's grab some of this chicken essence. Let's also grab nature essence. I won't need the dye essence in that case. Um, but it's just another step and we can easily do it with this. So we're going to add chicken essence here. We're going to add nature essence here. And we'll go ahead and remember that. Now to make the eggs, I believe it is... That, yeah, that makes eggs. And we're going to go ahead and apply that. So that's how you make eggs. And then the flour, this is going to have to be um, soybeans. And so what we're going to do, we're going to say that you can pump over soybeans. And let's go ahead and just shift right click to clear those out. We don't want those there anymore. Let's do, um, tell you what, let's go ahead and move this. I really only need like three slots. Because the way that we're going to do this, I think this will be better. Four slots for soybeans, three for sugar, three for chicken essence, three for nature essence. Remember that. And then let's go ahead and get, I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead. If I think we'll be able to do this all through one crafter. So we're going to go ahead and say the result of the crafting operation for eggs is going to stay in the input buffer. And we'll just apply that. And then sugar, we're going to say the same thing. Stay in the input buffer. And then we're going to need to make bakeware really, really quick. And we're also going to want to make a mortar and pestle. So there's that. There's that. And then um, chocolate takes a saucepan. So there's that. And then does um, cocoa takes mortar and pestle, butter takes a saucepan, and then we're going to have the soy milk coming in. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these three tools. We'll use this crafter for the Jaffa Cakes, this one for rubber chickens, which I have not got the rubber seeds done yet. 
I need to do those. So we're going to add those three in there. And we're going to say remember the current items. And then to make our flour, all it is is soybeans and mortar and pestle. Makes flour. And we're going to say stay in the input buffer. Apply. Okay. So there's how we make those things. And then let me go ahead and grab like three of these. This. This. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just make some flour, make some sugar, and make some eggs. And we're going to go ahead and just slot those in like that. And remember the current items. And then we just have to take care of the chocolate and the orange. Both of these are fairly easy. Uh, butter, uh, that's going to be our tofu system. Our milk's going to come from tofu. And then the cocoa powder comes from cocoa beans. So what we're going to do for the cocoa beans is giving free reign of mystical agriculture at the very start. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Um, we're going to do that, and we're going to say, stay in the input buffer. Go ahead and throw that in there and remember. Okay, so we've used up half of our crafter slots, but we've still got a fair few slots to do. We're going to be doing a lot of this, and it's not. we're not going to be able to use mystical agriculture for our setup in Enigmatica, but we're going to be doing a lot of this in Enigmatica. Like a lot of it soon. All right, so next up we need to start getting into tofu. We need silken tofu here. We need soy milk here. We also need cocoa powder. Let me go ahead and set up a recipe for that. So this, cocoa beans, stay in the input. There we go. There's how you make cocoa powder. And let me go ahead and just set up that. Okay, so now the soy milk and the butter. The butter is fairly easy. We are going to have to automate salt and silken tofu, which what we're going to do, we're going to make ourselves a couple pressers. They are default recipe. And we got a task completed for making pressers. I don't know what that goes to. I'm sure it's something in farming and agriculture. Oh, yeah. Grinder, apiary, water filter, whale. Okay. We'll get into those later. I will say we're not going to do as much ag on here as we are in Enigmatica, but Enigmatica, we've got some serious agriculture coming up. It's going to be fun. I actually started working on it, in fact, already. Um, let's go ahead and the presser, which for this, I'm actually going to want a couple filters, which should just be, I'm sure it's default, which is hoppers and paper. Yeah. All right. So we got our filters. Let's go ahead and set up our pressers over on this side. Um, go ahead and do that. And I don't believe that these can, I think they have to extract from the bottom and input from the, no, maybe they can do both. Let's see, we're about to find out. We're gonna say that, oops. I've got to send these soybean seeds to the trash. We're going to set up a trash with a filter um, here shortly. Because we're going to have a lot of trash that we don't really care to keep coming in. And so we're going to deal with that. So we're going to say that you can insert the filter is going to say soybeans only. So you can insert. It's on green. Do that. And then if we give it a second, I'm going to drop three in here so it starts running. Um, yeah, I think these have to be filtered through the top. So let's take this and we'll just do that then. And then this one, you can insert, you're going to have the filter that's already configured, which has the soybean. You can insert. There we go. It's starting to pile up soybeans. And it's going to start making silken tofu and grain bait. Now the silken tofu, we're going to need that over, um, I believe it was for the butter. Uh, yeah, silken tofu for butter. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of that. And on the extract, we're going to say that you can extract, it's always active, and it's going to be round robin because I want it to send silken tofu over here if it's needed. And then the rest of the silken tofu is going to go 
into here. We're going to put a filter. We're going to say you accept silk and tofu and you can insert there. And then over here, we're going to say that you can extract always active on the green channel. And it's going to make firm tofu and soy milk for us. So let's go ahead and grab that soy milk and let's slot it into here. Okay. Now we've got the milk, we've got the cocoa powder, and all we need is salt. Um, now I've got to say, we can make salt with woven cotton. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get ourselves a water filter. Stone and iron box. Okay, task completed. And then we're going to have to get some woven cotton. Three woven cotton makes three woven cotton, so that's good. <laughs> those recipes, those kind of recipes always drive me insane. So there's woven cotton. There we go. And the water filter. If we set it up like that'll be the floor. Put our woven cotton in. Then we're going to need some water, of course. What do I do with my buckets? Did I put those away. I just need such a big spice. So our floor is basically going to be water, like glass with water underneath it. That's fine. I just kind of want it to all be in this room and be visible. So at a glance we can look and say, you know, oh, there's our Jaffa factory. Um, slash rubber chicken, because rubber chicken is just so easy to automate. <laughs> with chicken essence, it's so easy. We'll go ahead and throw that into there. There we go. It's going to start running. It's not super fast, but it does produce eight salt per craft, which is plenty for us. And it also produces fresh water, which we're going to just have to void. Let's go ahead. Oh, it gave us, it changes to mechanism salt when we take it. Okay, so we'll just slot that in and we'll say, remember that. And then the butter, salt, and the silken tofu. So we're going to make a recipe here that says, if you take the saucepan, the silken tofu, the salt, you're going to get butter. Oh, oops. And we're going to say stay on in the internal buffer. And then let me go ahead and just make one of these. There we go. And task completed. We got butter. And I just got a quest completed. I grabbed this string out of here. And apparently that completed a quest for us. Didn't even know it was a quest. But we'll go ahead and just throw that woven cotton in. Um, and then throw our butter in remember and then we just have we have two more slots our chocolate bar is like that so we're going to go ahead i'm going to have to get rid of maybe one of these things of soybeans or one of these things of sugar cane or something that's fine it's not a problem so what we're going to do is we're going to say that if you take i can never remember okay if you take um saucepan you take butter you take soy milk you take cocoa powder you're going to get chocolate bars, and we'll just apply that and stay in the internal buffer. Okay, and that means we have the last slot available for the overall craft, right? So, then what we're going to do, we have to get oranges automated. And the woven cotton will automate the us. I, honestly, I could just set up a flax system and just pump that over, and it inserts through the top. Um... Now for extraction, what we're going to need to do, I'm going to have to make some more item conduits, but we're going to have to pump out the bottom of it, if I recall correctly. But for the oranges, um, I've actually got an orange sapling right here. I don't remember if we bought it or if we got it from a quest reward. Oh, and by the way, the reason I pushed for skeleton and zombie essences is so we can make infinite fertilized soil. Is basically the point of that. Just a heads up. All right, let's go. Let's go say right here, and we're just gonna grow that. And we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves some oranges, and then we're gonna go ahead and just shear these off. Which actually, if we grow these to full, and oh, that still doesn't work. I guess they changed that, so it doesn't work anymore. But we're going to go ahead and just grab those nodes. And then let me go ahead and just grab 
all these leaves also. And then we'll pull off this. Yeah, I didn't get that second node. Maybe it has to be fully grown now to get nodes. That might be the case. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to move our harvester for starters. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to have it set up um, basically in just one of these small little plots. And I'm thinking right up here would be good. So what we'll do is we'll just remove this. And we're going to put up our jungle leaves up here. Which if you have fancy graphics on, you'll want to put something underneath that because you'll be able to see through it. I run fast graphics for the purposes of recording. so. Um, and then we're going to put our orange node right there. And then what we have to do is we have to move our harvester. It's coming to right here. And we're going to say you're going to harvest in a 5x5. Five five. And we're going to say area... And there's the area that it harvests, which is this entire section. And then we'll just run over power conduits. There we go. Now I'm going to have to get a few more orange um, nodes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some oak saplings and just make some orange, um, orange saplings. And then we'll just rinse and repeat. There we go. This one's a bit better. We'll go ahead and just uh, grow these out real quick. Alright, so we should be in business here. Which this isn't... I know it's not a ton of um, plants. It's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but that's okay. I don't mind that. And then we're just going to attach a conduit here. Extract, always active, it's on green. Okay. And then all we have to do is slot our oranges. And remember, and that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, I didn't make a, a chocolate bar. So let me do, that's uh, that's what I'm missing here. Let's go ahead and just remove one of those sugar canes. So chocolate bar is butter, it is milk, and it's cocoa powder in a saucepan. So that, 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 that makes us our chocolate bars. Okay, and then we're going to slot these in like right here, and remember. Okay, so everything's slotted in now, up here. And then the only thing that's going to be going to the output should be the Jaffa Cakes. So then what we'll do is we'll just say, that's how you make a Jaffa Cake, and we'll just clean this up a little bit, because that, we want actual eggs, flour, chocolate bar, oranges, and... This is going to go to the output buffer. Apply. So eight recipes, one crafter. There we go. We can make all of that in one crafter. So we're going to say ignore. Oh, and one thing I forgot to do. Set this to EXTC. So that way our bakeware stays in here. What we need to do at this point is I'm going to turn off the insert on this crafter for right now. This extracts on red. This one extracts on red. We're going to say it's always active. And then this one is always active. It's not going anywhere just yet. So, um, And then if we take and we go and make some more item conduits. Okay, so now all we have to do is just run this over like that. And then items are going to start coming in. Yeah, I set the insert up. Yeah, there we go. And it's going to start crafting us Jaffa Cakes. And it's probably going to be waiting right now on... It's waiting on, no, it's not waiting on salt. It's waiting on tofu. Um, we're going to have to set up a trash can for that because I don't need the grain bait. The firm tofu, I'll probably slot it because there's a lot we can do with it. Um, well, no, actually, we could just trash it because this is kind of a closed system. All I really want this room making is Jaffa cakes and rubber chickens. What we're going to do, let's see if, if I run this over... Can I extract the salt from the top? That's what I'm curious about. I think it has to be the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm pretty sure it's the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll change this to... Well, this will be an insert line in a little bit. If we can't insert through the bottom, which I don't think that we can. 
Pam stuff, it's all very automatable, but it's all very side specific as well. So let me just dig down. Yes, there's our water filter. We're gonna put a conduit here. We're gonna say that you can extract always active. I'm just gonna run that over. Now if we take a look, we should see. Oh, but you know what? It's not coming out because this salt turns into mechanism salt when it goes in your inventory. Let's say this extracts on black for just a second. And let me grab that out. And then what if we changed over this and said that you insert on black for just a moment. And let's pull out our salt. And let me set this to on to activate because it's pumping out sugar. Okay, so now it's getting the salt. And so then if I go back to the butter recipe and we just clear this out real quick. Or actually, I think if I move this stuff in here. There we go. That makes butter. Okay, so we're going to apply that. And then we can set this back to green. Now it should be able to pull out the Pam salt. There we go, it's pulling out. You could also pump it into a drawer with a conversion upgrade would work as well, but um, yeah, I'll just toss that, I don't really need it. It's automatic now. Okay, and then what we're going to do is um, let's go ahead, actually these three cloches, I'm gonna pull out soybeans out of this. I don't wanna run soybeans anymore on two of these because I'm not using that many soybeans and what we're going to do those two cloches one of those is going to run flax and we're just going to do the Pam's Harvest Craft flax because oh, I gotta make it into a seed and that completed a quest I need to go through the agriculture quests I guess but that's gonna start producing flax for us which we're gonna use for automating this out with the woven cotton and I will say this crafter is only going to have a couple of recipes in it, in fact. Um, this one, we're going to go ahead and take chicken essence because we need to make rubber chickens. We're going to go ahead and add this in real quick. Um, so this recipe, we're going to say internal and you make that. And we're going to say on to activate for right now. So you make raw chicken. We're going to go ahead and slot a few of those. Then we're going to set this to, we're going to turn this on for just a second. And there's some raw chicken. And go ahead and remember that. And then we're going to take flax. And we're going to set this into here. Like say like that. And then right here, we're going to make a recipe and say, this is internal. Three of that makes two stream. And then, um, Remember, turn that on for just a second. This recipe here, in uh, this one will be external. And we're going to say string makes woven cotton and apply. And then turn this on for just a moment. Split that up. Remember, so we make sure and save a couple slots for woven cotton um, in this. And then what we're going to do, this will be on the... On the red channel right extracts on red yeah the only other thing we need going into here is rubber and if we want to make the rubber seeds real quick these are either tech reborn rubber or industrial foregoing plastic and I've got some sap here so let's go ahead and then we have to set up a trash can in a minute too um, with a filter and go ahead and set it up to filter out all this junk that we've got like byproducts Go ahead and throw that in there. And I'm going to make some rubber seeds. I'm not going to worry about making these 10 10 10s because they're going to produce plenty for our needs, I think. And at least not for this one. I'm, I might later so that we've got more rubber for our needs, but I don't know. This might, even still, it might produce enough for us, but I don't know. This is just for this dedicated system. So, and then I'm going to need Prudentium seeds. And I'm going to need four pieces of Prudentium. There we go.
and we'll go ahead and craft out our rubber seeds and we'll drop that into the last collage. So that's going to be able to start making rubber for us. And we're going to want an extra utilities filter. I've got an extra utilities trash can, extra utilities filter. And then what we're going to do, we're going to trash um, farm tofu. We're going to trash grain bait. And task completed, we got grain bait. We're going to trash fresh water. We're going to trash um, flax seeds. We're going to trash um, soybean seeds. And I think that's all. So what we're going to do is we're going to add farm tofu, grain bait, fresh water, flax, soybeans to this. And then we'll just set up our trash can setting, say, right here. We'll add in our filter right there. And we'll say that you can insert on the green channel. So that should drain out all the junk that we're producing. Dump it into there for us. And then we can just keep making Jaffa cakes. And then what we need to do is we need to feed over our woven cotton here. We need to feed it into this. Now, I don't think that, um, like if I set this to insert on red, I don't think that's going to feed woven cotton in. So let's turn off the insert for right now. Um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to insert from the top. Because this should be extracting already. Yeah, it's always active. Okay, so I'm going to have to pump it into here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that you can insert on the red channel. Then we take a look here. And we should say... There we go. There's woven cotton. And then all we need to do now, we need to grab our rubber essence from here. And let me go ahead actually and dump all this stuff into there our rubber essence and this makes rubber like that okay so we're going to say internal buffer craft like that apply and let me go ahead and put some rubber essence in here we'll go ahead and say make it and i forgot to make it for remember whoops okay remember that stuff and uh, then we just need to make the rubber chicken recipe, which is, it's going to go to the output buffer, like that, apply, and then we're going to turn this back on. There we go. Oh, rubber chickens do not stack. So what we're going to do, we're going to make ourselves a drawer that goes in here, and we're going to make it match this style of drawer, which is the marble and the, um, the polished slate. So I'm going to make a two by two or a two by one drawer, I mean. We'll just toss that in there. We're gonna go that, that, there we go. And we'll just drop in our drawer setting. Um, we'll put it right here. So we're gonna put an item conduit right there, that. And I think this is all set up now. Let's make sure it's remembers where everything goes. We're gonna set it to ignore redstone and we're gonna set the insert now to green. Okay, so it's going to start filling this stuff out for us. And it'll start pumping this full of woven cotton once it gets to crafting that. Oh, you know what? Okay, hold on just a second. We're going to say on to activate. And I never set a place for it to store string. So, whoops. I went ahead and slotted three spots for string. So now it can start filling this up with woven cotton. And keeping this stockpiled. Of course, it doesn't really need any salt at the moment. So, Okay, and then what we'll do, we've got our drawer setting right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to slot rubber chickens, which I know these don't stack, but that's okay. What we need to do is make storage upgrades for the rubber chickens. Make this so that it stores a lot. And then it won't be an issue. Let me grab the drawer key. Let me lock this in. We're going to set it to insert on red. And there we go. Now it's going to start filling up with uh, Jaffa cakes and rubber. It's already full up with rubber chickens because it can only store 16 at the moment. So let me make um, some upgrades. So I've got four storage upgrade fives. We're just going to go ahead and slot these in. 
So now it can store 2048 rubber chickens, 2048 stacks of Jaffa cakes. That's going to be plenty. Honestly, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and just pull out two of those because I only need a thousand rubber chickens total. And so 1024 is plenty. Honestly, it's plenty of it. Oh, you can right click them to make sounds. <clears throat> okay. So that's just going to kind of run passively. It's going to produce our Jaffa Cakes and our Rubber Chickens, which is going to complete out two of these challenges right here. Um, when you start working on this one, also, these aren't too bad. But I have noticed that the fish caught, I believe it does not. Let me pop over to the Fisherman's Hut, because she's farmed up some fish. And I don't know if I, if I grab them, if it'll count. But I believe we actually have to manually fish up a thousand fish. Which you could do like an AFK fish farm. I'm not going to. I've never been a fan of AFK fish farms uh, myself. So if I grab the raw jellyfish, I complete a task. Um, but it does not count towards my thousand fish. Okay. I'll put that back. I don't know where she's dumping these at. Probably, yeah, right in here. Obsidian fish, swift fish, flying fish. Um, anyways, we are going to end out this episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.